G'day guys, in this video I'm going to do a walk around of my 80 series Land Cruiser race car. This is going to be a complete detail, I'm going to tell you everything about the car. So if you're interested and you've been following the build, this is the chance where you find out all about it. Here at Mad Matt Ford Road, what I love doing is helping people get out there and wheel well. I love helping people be educated about their wheeling. And if that's what you're into, well hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. So I'm going to just do all of this on my phone. Reason being, I'm on my own today and uh, Mrs Mad Matt's sick in bed. So, uh, so we've got to get the content out there. So I'm going to be doing it on my phone because that's the easiest way I can get around the car. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip the camera around and get into it. So big picture, this is an 80 series Land Cruiser, petrol, auto, and it started out obviously as a full bodied rig. And I always love the look of a style side vehicle. Um, that's where you basically make the body all part of the one vehicle. I love that two door look and I, um, I just really enjoyed that. So I wanted to make my race car look like that. So some mates and I, we basically, uh, we chopped the back part of the roof off there and we also bobbed it, which is where we removed about 250 millimeters from this section of the body and the chassis, which meant that we should shortened up the chassis rail and we shortened up the body so we can really get that departure angle really really nice so that was the look I wanted um, we also cut the rear quarters down there did that quarter chop and uh, again that just helps have that clearance at the back of the vehicle so that's worked really really well I'm very very pleased with the way it's come up the overall look of the vehicle there to my eye and it's really my eye that matters, <laughs> is absolutely spot on. The proportions are correct. And uh, yes, I absolutely love the look of the vehicle. So that was the way we started. This was originally a white Land Cruiser. It's a 1994 model. And um, yeah, now it's black and it's a style side ute or pickup, as you Americans would say. So let's start here at the front end. Uh, we'll start with the light setup. So this has got Raptor lights. These come from a company in Australia. It's all fat uh, Australian made. Um, these are a LED light and they're Raptor brand. It comes from a company called Ultravision. They make this brand as well as their Nitro brand. Uh, we've got this light bar up the top here which gives us a very nice flood fill sort of light. So the front two spotlights here give us the distance. Uh, they, they, well, I don't know the distance specs off the top of my head, but it's a lot of distance. That gives us the fill up the top there and fills the whole space. Down here on the front bar, we've got these two little quarter lights from Raptor and they they just come out into the side there and fill that close space um, area for us. Under the front here, I've got four rock lights. Again, they're called the Atoms. These do come out of the Ultravision Nitro range, but they're running a red LED, and so we get a nice red halo look coming from the front of the vehicle at night. And at the rear of the vehicle, I've got two of those as well. So there's one just there and one just there. Now they don't only <laughs> look good, I hope, they have a practical purpose and that is to give us light at night when we're packing rocks or needing to see where the tires are. Up here on the top, I have this as a reverse light. So when I select reverse, that comes on along with this light here and this light there, which makes those two lights completely redundant and <laughs> not needed. Talking about lights here, and here, these are running lights. They strobe as we run, and they're basically a running light that can be seen in dust, or oh, that's the idea of it anyway. So that's the main lighting system of the vehicle. We'll come back to the front here. And, uh, well, it's got the headlights. These are an upgraded headlight off eBay. They don't work very well, but they look good. So we, I left those in there because I think that they just make the, that, that angry look look really sweet i like that so that's uh that's the whole look of the car from the front there so at the front here as well we've got the ultra hook from factor 55 as our hook we've got our winch dildo here now the idea of this is when you winch in the navigator 
my co-driver, he can hook the hook onto there and he can be jumping back into the vehicle whilst I'm spooling it in with the in-cab in controls until I see this start to dip down like that and I know that I'm at the end of my winch rope, but it also slows the winch down. So that's the feature there. So the winch is a worn 8274 high mount winch, but it's been completely beefed up and we've done videos to show you all about that. There's two videos out there. It's been completely beefed up using winch gear products, which comes from the company Roadrunner Off-Road. So it's got an upgraded motor, which is 6.8 horsepower. And we're running it on 24 volt sys on a 24 volt system, so I'll show you that um, in a moment. I'm running the sniper line. This is a basically one of the best winch lines that you can get. It's got this uh, outer sheath which protects the inner core. The inner core is where the load is carried, and this protects that inner core with this outer sheath. So it makes it very very good for abrasion resistance. The winch has got what we call a free spool on it. So, or, sorry, yeah, so it's an air actuated free spool. So we supply air to this line here and it disconnects the winch drum so you can pull the rope off and that's all controlled inside the cab. So you don't have the traditional knob here which you pull and push to engage and disengage the motor. I'll pop the bonnet here and we'll talk about a few of the things I've done in here. Oh, just on the bull bar, I'm running an Oricom communication system. Now, they're about to provide me with one of their latest uh, UHF radios, and they're just waiting for that to come on board. So that'll be in the car when we race, and it's what they call a dual receive radio, which is perfect for our use because what it'll allow us to do is listen to two channels simultaneously. So race control and our team channel, we'll be able to listen to both those at the same time. I wanted to show you this down here. See this grill here? I've pushed, put this in place because the event I'm going to race in next is called Cliffhanger and there's a lot of scrub and debris and I wanted to protect the air conditioning condenser. Yes, I've got air conditioning and the radiator from debris or sticks going in there. And if debris, grass and whatever builds up, it will simply undo this bolt here and one down lower, and this can come out and be cleaned as part of our servicing. So that's pretty cool. Now in the interest of disclosure, I am sponsored and uh, I've raised a sponsorship from many of these companies, some of its products, some of the, some of these guys are sponsoring me with cash, and I'm very grateful to, uh, to these guys um, for letting me show them what I can do um, when I get out there on the racetrack. So, um, if ever you're looking to support companies and support what I do here at Mammoth Fall Drive, these are the guys that are supporting me and I greatly appreciate it. So now, so when we come back into the, into the engine bay here, it's just a standard, uh, 1FZFE. It's a four and a half litre inline six cylinder motor. They're nigh on bulletproof. This motor that you're looking at now came out of my very first 80 series Land Cruiser and I sold it to my mate when he was building this as his race car. And uh, I sold it to him with about 430,000 kilometres on it and I'd beaten on it for 100,000 of those kilometres. And here it is in a race car, that cylinder head has never been off. All she likes to do is make power and, uh, well, no, she doesn't like doing that actually. <laughs> But burning fuel, that's what she loves to do. So I mentioned earlier that we've got a 24 volts, uh, we run the winch on 24 volts. So I've had to design and build a 24 volt system for the engine. And that's this alternator here. So I run two alternators. That's the first 12 volt alternator over there, factory position. And then I run this alternator. And I've used the belt that normally runs the air conditioning uh, compressor. I've used that system to create my own idler pulley here and another idler pulley down the bottom there as a tensioner to create that belt system to drive the system and drive the air conditioning and that seems to be working quite well. Now I do make a bit of a joke about running air conditioning but the reason I'm running it is last year, at, well, last time I went to cliffhanger event I got heat stroke because you're in a race suit and you're running around like a pork chop. So I thought I'm going to leave the air conditioning in and that way we can manage our fatigue. 
This is an isolator. The vehicle has to have isolation systems so that when you flick a master switch, everything isolates. This is isolating the 24 volt system. And over this side, we're isolating the 12 volt system. And then we have two circuit breakers here, one for the two air compressors and one for the, um, uh, for the fuse box, which drives lights and stuff like that. We have to run a, an alarm system like a sirens or something so that when we are approaching vehicles to overtake them, not that I think that's going to be happening very often for me, um, we can blast a horn. So I thought I'd go creative and got those $50 air horns from eBay. How's that? Hey, sound great too. Um, okay, so that's pretty much all stock in here. With regards to the gearbox, why on automatics? which is these guys here, they rebuilt the gearbox for me and they've tricked it up a little bit. So it's got a slightly tighter shift pattern, uh, slightly more clutch pack so that there's less chance of slippage. And uh, they've done a great job on that. That really does drive very nice. I just forgot to mention something to you, um, so I'll jump in here. So part of the whole build process for me was in our class that we're racing, you're, not, you're limited to the amount of power you can run. And so you've got to stay with a stock motor. Now you can obviously do internal works and stuff, but basically the cheapest way for me to get power was to reduce the weight in the vehicle. So I've done a, as much as I can to reduce weight and really give that some serious consideration. As it sits now, and I will weigh this accurately at some point, it weighs about 2.2 metric tonnes. So that's relatively light. That's almost a, what this vehicle weighed when it came off the shelf showroom floor. So I'm pretty pleased with that result. The other thing I've spent a lot of time doing is weight balance. I've, I've tried to spend, um, get as much weight from the front of the vehicle to the rear of the vehicle. So that's why we've got spares, spare tyres and batteries and stuff like that up the back here. Um, just again to get that weight at the back. And that means when you jump, when you land, the front end is what traditionally takes all the hit. And so by getting the weight up the back as much as possible we've uh, we've been able to manage that to some extent ultimately I'll probably even move the cooling system the radiator and that to the rear of the vehicle as well but that's for another day oh, I'll point out that's a diff breather I'm running uh, high diff breathers so that's a front diff breather just there other than that this engine and engine bay is very stock and uh, in very basic order I'll show you this uh, fuse box and system here. So this is a relay bank uh, running through here and um, it runs 12 volts and switches the 24 volt system. What I've done is because the LED lights can all run on 20, 24 volts, the, all the spotlights are running on the 24 volt circuit and that fuse box is controlling that. Now, if we look at the front sus front system suspension, I'm running about a f I'm running a four inch lift in the front. Three of that is springs, and then I've got a one inch coil spacer just there. That's to give me a little bit more compression space um, when I hit hit and land from jumps and stuff. Um, just to try and give me a bit more distance between the bump stop here and and there so i've raised it up an inch i should change that to coil springs but at the moment the budget's not allowing for that to happen this disaster here although it's actually working quite well is my own homemade mad mat specialized custom limit straps what they're about is the design of these suspension systems is that on full droop so when your axle is furthest away from the chassis you your shock absorbers limit that travel well in a racing situation where you're jumping and stuff you don't want to be smashing your shock absorbers day in and day out so we often have a limit strap design now you can buy commercial units which work fantastic but i had an idea and i wanted to do it myself so that's what i've done it does work uh how long it works we'll find out but uh, it does work and it didn't cost me very much at all. So there you go. All right, uh, with regards to the winch, this is the winch controller here. This is an all bright solenoid and all of the in-cab controls come to that and switch the power. 
With regards to the front differential, this is a stock Toyota Land Cruiser housing, but we've got a lot of bracing on it. So we've braced from the knuckles here, right the way through. All of this is bracing, all of this, through under there is bracing, right out to that knuckle. And we've braced the top side of the knuckle, not that you can see it in the footage. So we've made that as strong as we can. We've got a upgraded tire um, steering arm here, tie bar, and we've got upgraded panard rods, which is this one here. They're an upgraded superior unit, and so adjustable. That means that we can get the track of the axle centered into the vehicle. And we, I'll go around this side and I'll show you the radius arms, which are again upgraded. So these are a superior engineering, um, well, they call it a hyperflex arm. It's a complete design that allows a lot more flex and articulation out of the front of the vehicle. And it allows it to be more supple, which is quite nice. We're also running the remote res two inch Pro Fender shock absorber. These have got custom valving in them uh, from Superior Engineering so that we get um, the ride and handling that we're looking for. And that's making a, a huge difference to the vehicle, getting that tuned in and, and working properly. So the tyres here are Maxxis Trepidors. I'm sure most of you recognise them straight away. And uh, Maxxis is one of my sponsors, which I'm very grateful for because obviously tyres is a big expense to any uh, racing event. Now, what I've done here, though, um, my mates at Roadrunner Off-Road, they um, helped me make my own beadlock system. So this has got a number of features on the wheel. I'll see if I can show you through here can you see there's like a, a a lip down where my finger's pointing that's a strengthener on the inside of the rim that i've welded on so that's a, a a piece of steel all the way around the perimeter of the rim therefore if when i'm aired down if i hit a rock or something hard that protects the rim from buckling then on the outside here we've got this inner piece here which has been laser cut I did all of this myself. I welded that to the Toyota steel wheel. Then I've got this white plastic here, which is a, a nylon, and that's a um, 15 millimeter spacer or anti-coning ring. And the idea of that is to clamp this. This is a big clamp, and it clamps the bead of the tire to this plate here in that space. Now the bead of the tire is 18 millimeters thick. So by having this at 15 millimeters, we put a three millimeter of clamp onto that bead of the tire, therefore sealing the tire and clamping it. The big advantage of running a bead lock system like this is when you run lower tire pressures, you, it allows the um, the, 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 well, it keeps the tire from spinning on the wheel and it keeps it located. So that's the significant advantage. It also, when you're cornering hard and the tire wants to roll under, the tire won't roll off the bead as it normally would. So they're all about serious off-road and pretty much if you're going to go at speed and racing, you need to look at a system like that. So I'm very pleased with that. I think that those red rings on the outside there really set the car off and give it a good look. All right, so 16 minutes in, and I've got lots more to show you. I hope you're enjoying this. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and stuff as well. I'd appreciate the support. So underneath the vehicle, I mentioned the gearbox earlier. I've added a little bit of extra bracing to the automatic gearbox sump pan there, just some flat bar welded in place, um, welded to the guard. So it's not much, but it'll help. The cross members bent and buckled, but hey, it's still there. And uh, some of the chassis bolts were stripped, so I've welded the cross member in place. It's easy just to grind those welds out if we need to pull that out of out um, on the racetrack or in pits. The transfer case is the standard Toyota unit, but it's got a 33% reduction in it. What that means for me is that I can race in low range and get up to 80 kilometers per hour in low range, and that's pretty quick. The motor's on rev limiter, but it's cool. Now I'm gonna to link to a video above and show you how I made my own rock sliders. 
These cost me less than $200 to make. And essentially, as you can see, I've cut the sill out of the vehicle and grafted in the section there, that RHS section. The reason I did it this way is normally you mount off a chassis rail and that's obviously got some significant advantages, but it reduces the clearance you have between the sill and the road. So I wanted to keep this ramp over area here as high as I could. And so I've grafted that into the sill and uh, you can go into that video above and that are linked and watch that, um, how I did it. But I think that uh, I actually like the look of that and it's got a real practical feature to it as well. Let's look at the rear end of the vehicle. Now it's all a stock design. It's designed as a five link suspension system with a sway bar, which is what we're looking at here, one end of the sway bar. These are an upgraded link here and they've got what we call a heim joint. See, it's not a rubber bush, it's a heim joint in there. And that really allows the, the um, rear end to be very soft and supple. It, it flexes so easily because it doesn't get that um, resistance coming from a bush. Um, on the upper links here and here are both heimed at both ends and they're working really well. And I've got them set up, rightly or wrongly, some say I'm an idiot to do this. I've got them set up so they're quite long and rolling the pinion of the diff up. I'll come around this side and show you what I mean. One of the things that happens off road is you munt your tail shaft and you dig your pinions into the rocks and stuff. So. You can see there how the pinion's pointed upwards a little bit, and I've done that intentionally to try and keep that tail shaft up high, and you can see how high it is there, and to protect that pinion and the front end of the diff. We'll find out if that's a good idea or not, but so far it's working a treat. I wanna to talk to you about this device here. There's my rear limit strap, but see this device here? This is made by a mate of mine, Ramped, or Benji, Ramped Customs. I'll link to his, his pages. So what this is, is a pan hard, this is the pan hard bar here. Okay, this is what stops the, the differential from moving out from under the vehicle. So what it does is that bolt there is normally down here, which as you can imagine, I'll come back a bit. If you imagine that panard bar would then be running down to this point here. So it's got quite an angle on it. Now what happens when we're racing, when we go over a jump, that swinging action means that the differential drops and moves to the side of the vehicle. And that means every time you jump, the vehicle kicks to the right. And it's quite annoying. And the other thing is it changes the roll center of the vehicle by moving it upwards like we have. So by moving, putting that device in, I've not only brought my roll center or the center of gravity of the vehicle up high, um, up more central, I've also um, had the effect of stopping that kick when I do the jumps and it's made a nice difference. So that's the other feature. Obviously we've got the sway bar in there that's through there. The rear differential itself, where I'm running ARB lockers if I didn't say it earlier, but the rear diff is actually out of a 105 series Land Cruiser. And the reason for that is they have a stronger center, they have bigger axles. So I'm running a bigger axle design, but I'm still running the 80 series hubs, the six stud, six stud hubs. Now I'm sure you've, many of you have noticed right away that there's something missing in this whole space here. I've removed the handbrake. Many would say that Toyota Land Cruisers don't have a handbrake anyway. And I would agree with that. So I removed it. There is no handbrake in this vehicle. Oh, but is there? Well, come with me. <laughs> For the race, we have to have a handbrake or a means of stopping the vehicle. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. We have a handbrake. <laughs> How good's that? All right, maybe I'll do it with two hands next time. <laughs> so that's my handbrake. All right, guys, let's um, 
let's come up and look at the vehicle from the back here so i hope you're enjoying this content i know it's going on for a fair while but i just i know many of you are just so interested in how i've done this and all the details so i wanted to give it all to you i love the look of the trophy trucks and unashamedly i've gone I'm going to have the two spares on the back. Now, on race day, we will probably only run one of those spares, but some of our races are 150 kilometres long, and that's why I needed the ability to carry two spares. This battery here and this battery here are for the 24-volt system. This battery here is the 12 volt system. So I'm running three batteries in the vehicle, completely separate systems. This is the diff breather for the rear diff. My remote reservoir canisters for the rear shocks. This box here is for food and supplies on race day and that's for vehicle spares on race day. These two coolers here are for the automatic transmission. So I've doubled up two factory Toyota coolers in series and just got a fan. As soon as you turn the ignition on, that comes on and then we start cooling stuff. It keeps the auto nice and cool. This device here is a ground anchor. So when we're winching in cliffhanger event, oftentimes there's nowhere to actually mount your hook your winch to so you've got to dig into the ground and that's what this plow do device does we hook the winch rope to here and you dig it in and it when you winch this just plows itself down into the ground and this can literally go that depth underground so that's what this is about once we've got ourselves up and winched up we then hook on with this and pull this out of the ground because sometimes they get stuck pretty bad obviously we've got to have fire extinguishers so i got one there and one there these are on a quick release bracket system that my mate matt ratcliffe made and uh, they work quite well you just pull that pin out and that just lifts out i wish i'd painted them before i put them on there eh? silly me this is obviously a high lift jack and um, that's so we can change tires primarily although it may be used you know in some forms of recovery as well so it's a heavy piece of gear and that but it's quite versatile in this race environment over here we've got a bunch of our air system so this little retractor reel airline get, allows us to run um, an air blower for blowing out air filters and stuff but mainly for pumping up tires that's our air tank that isolates the the retractor reel these are our locker solenoids front and rear diff lock solenoids and an air tank and stuff like that another very personal thing here um, the the reason for the 2113, that's the dates for my son's birthday, not the month, but just the day of the month. And uh, so my eldest is 21st and the other youngest is the 13th. And then this is uh, just a very personal thing to my brother who passed away. And uh, so he was going to be my navvy and uh, he passed away before he could do that. So he said to me when we were negotiating or talking about doing it, he's like, but Matt, you've got to let me drive. So he's driver number one. Anyway, miss you, bro. So you've seen my U butte handbrake. What a beauty. There's another fire extinguisher there actually before I jump in. So with regards to the seats, we're running a SAS racing seat, uh, very padded, very suspension. I may change these to a non-suspension seat down the track because one of the challenges you have with suspension seats is that your seat belts can come loose on you. We're running a five point rated, um, a five point harness. So these two go over your, your belt, um, your waist. This comes up between your legs. These are your shoulder straps. They're a three inch strap. We'll also race, I don't have it with me today, but we'll also be racing using a next gen neck support, like a hands device. So you can avoid a basal skull fracture in the unlikely event you have a serious accident. Okay, let's talk, talk through a bit of the cab design. So, these are my volts meters here. So that gives me my, see that doesn't show up real good. That says 12 volts and that's 24 volt system. So that's, we know what voltage we've got. My two air compressors, my front and rear diff locks, my master winch controller in out on the winch and the air spool for the winch is operated from here. This device here, I'll just turn it on. 
is not something that you can purchase any longer, but it was a mate of mine was making these, and it's called a well-tempered unit, no longer available, but it's an excellent device for monitoring temperatures. So for redundancy, both of these are monitoring the same point on the engine, and both uh, this is monitoring gearbox out, gearbox in temperatures. And you heard the beep, that alarms if um, it goes outside the parameters that I've set. So it's a nice safety thing because let's face it, when you're racing, you don't have time to be looking at uh, gauges and stuff like that. I've got this gauge here, which is for measuring the air temp uh, pressure in the air tank, and that's just handy so you can see what's going on. Let's have a play with the uh, ejecto seto, which is the horn button. <laughs> that just fantastic all right my navigator is going to be running with a gps unit mounted up here like a marine style of gps unit and that's so he can see where we're going and everything we'll have the oricom radio uhf radio mounted down in here this device here is all about a system called rally safe at any given time the race organizers will know exactly where we are via satellite and the rally safe system it's got a number of other advantages it tells us if there's a vehicle coming towards us it tells us if we're um we're in coming up behind a vehicle and if we have an accident it sends race control a g-force reading of uh, that something's gone wrong and they can even send us very basic text messages so it's a fantastic safety tool and it's called rally safe i love the fact that um cliffhanger event is got us racing under rally safe it's brilliant okay we left the, we left the center console in the vehicle primarily for junk um no on race day it'll have things like gloves and stuff like that we're very aware of only having what we need in the vehicle um and on race day we are going to i uh, have got um luke from patrolling oz coming along to um to run gopros and stuff so we'll have a gopro mounted here at the back window. We'll also have one mounted facing forward, showing you the forward view of, of race day. And obviously if you're watching this video on, you know, in a couple of years time, all of that's redundant information. But anyway, there you go. Um, so comms between Navi and I, we're using the Cena communication, Bluetooth communication systems. So Cena uh, sponsored us with these 50R units and they mount on our helmets and it gives us complete Bluetooth comms up to a kilometre, 1.2 kilometres, I think, and that'll allow us to completely communicate with each other without uh, having to raise our voice or anything like that. So that's a beautiful piece of kit. We also have to, by rules, run seat belt cutters in the vehicle. So we've got one there and one here so that we can do that. So that's the flashing lights because I've now got the ignition on. You can see that. And that's so that you can see us in the dust. All right, guys, look, I've, I've loved showing you around my race car. And look, let's be frank, it could probably be registered on the road. And if you're living in America, it would be registered. I'd love to run this down the street. How good would that be? Um, here in Australia, no can do. Anyway, guys, I'm very pleased and, and to be honest, I'm quite proud of how this vehicle has come together, the way it looks. It's what I dreamed of. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm chuffed. I'm really looking forward to our racing event. I look forward to uh, showing you guys at some point. You know, we might meet up and you can uh, check it out in person. All right, guys, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.